Hi, uh, this is Hugh Perkins. So I want to talk about AutoGrad, and this session is going to be it's going to follow on from the last session, which was kind of like just like creating an AutoGrad variable and uh, chaining a couple of basic operations. And we're going to look at chaining more like an RNN. So we're going to have a single weight variable, and we're going to use that multiple times. So let's just start with a single weight variable and use it once. All right, so I'm going to source into the conda environment and just activate like this PyTorch environment. And let's do IPython. So import torch from torch import autograd. Okay, so like in a normal uh, network, we might have some sort of input and then we're going to do some sort of matrix multiplication with weight, maybe add a bias, and then that's going to be like uh, some sort of output, something like that. Uh, all right, we're going to replace the matrix multiplication with per element because it's simpler, and we're going to ditch the bias. Uh, so we could simply do a per element multiplication of input uh, with a weight, and we're going to get an out. And we're not going to do any loss or anything like that. So, uh, so what we've got is so we've got an input. Um, so let's say like torch.rand and we've got one row of three. Uh, all right, and then we've got a weight, which is going to call W. Uh, so let's make this input. Uh, where are we? Uh, input, input. Um, uh, let's make the input into, into a variable, all right? So uh, input equal uh, autograd.variable and torch.rand one, three. And the input doesn't need an ingredient. All right, so here's our input. And then we're going to create a, a variable for the weights of our network. So this is a variable. And as is everything. Uh, but this is going to be that like requires grad equal true. It's going to need a, need a gradient. OK, so we've got torch.rand. So it's like this. And then we want these weights to learn. So we want to have a gradient for it. All right, so there's a W, there's our input, and then we're just going to say, like, okay, out equal uh, W uh, times input. All right, so if we kind of write a bit, so input.create is going to be none, uh, W.create is going to be none, and out.creator is going to be some sort of multiplication. Here we've got the basic opposite of multiplication, right? Uh, and we've got w dot requires gradient is going to be true, as is output dot requires gradient. Uh, but input dot requires gradient should be false. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, output's got this. Uh, so like if we look at like input and w, so if we did like uh, the the uh, zero point six three seven five, which is input zero. And multiply that by 0 0.2292, which is the way we should get. So this matches the output, so that's correct. All right, so that's kind of standard network structure. And then we can back propagate through that. So if we do like out dot backward, and let's just do all ones. So we're going to do torch dot ones, uh, one row of three. Uh, we don't see anything, but if we look now at the w dot grad, uh, that has some gradient and since the formula that we're using is out equal w times input so the gradient like d out by d w is just going to be input right so uh, what is our input our input is this so our gradient matches the input so that's correct so that's good uh, okay, right, now, that's just kind of like a sort of standard single layer, linear, linear layer. Now, we want to have something more like an RNN. So in an RNN, you're going to chain these together for each time step. So here's the question. Can we simply reuse this W variable? Or we're we going to have to create a bunch of these W variables and somehow do some magic to share it. Well, the answer is um, 
should I say the answer? Well, anyway, so the answer is that we can simply reuse this W, which is quite cool. So um, if we've got, so we've got our input, um, and we're going to just say, okay, so the uh, state one, let's say, it's going to be input times W. And then state two, uh, we're going to take the state one, and we're simply going to multiply it by W. Now, I'm simplifying a bit because normally we'd have a new input, right? Uh, which we will have at some point, but not in this session because that makes the maths really complicated. Uh, so next session, we might kind of do like multiple inputs. Uh, but this is what we're just going to do like this. All right, so we've got input times the weight, and then we're going to multiply it by the weight again. Okay, so uh, we reset the gradient. So w dot grad dot data dot zero and no data. All right w dot grad okay and I don't think we have any grad on the output no we don't uh, okay and then we're going to back propagate through that so we take the out dot back so what we've we got here we've got basically we've got out equal w times w times input all right so the gradient like d out by d w so wait so this basically equals uh, input times w squared right so the gradient of this like d out by d w uh, we're simply going to differentiate this uh, with respect to w so it should be what we'd expect is to get uh, two times input times W. All right, that's the gradient that we would expect. Two times input times W. All right, so let's back propagate, and we're just going to back propagate once. So our dot backward, and torch dot ones, and one row three. Um, 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 equal this and uh, oh because the output is was state two rather than output right okay state one equal uh, w times input state two equal w times state one and let's just check our w dot grad this all zeros and we're going to do state two dot backward and then like some ones Torch dot ones, one row of three. Yep. Okay, and then so w dot grad should have a value. So we've got this value. So we're putting two nine one five, one point one, zero point six. Okay, and then what we expected from our calculation is the gradient should be two times input times w so is that the case so let's see so we've got grad um, two times input zero well let's print these out so we've got input and w okay so if we do two times 0 0.6360 0 times 0 0.2292 that is 0 0.29, so that, and that matches the W dot gradient, so that worked. So we, we actually used the W twice, and it's calculated in the gradient correctly. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, okay, so what else can we do? Yeah, so I'm going to come out of the uh, my Python. And uh, we can kind of take this to a bit more extreme. Uh, so I'm just going to, well, let's create a new one. So let's do test grad dot test tag two. And I guess we don't need this. 
hide. Can't see it. We can hide the sidebar, right? And get rid of this and get rid of this. Alright, so we're just going to do a simple script. So we've got import torch from torch, and import autograd. And we're going to do basically the same as before, but just in script form. So we've got input equal uh, autograd dot variable, and that's a uh, we're going to give it a, a, a rand, and it doesn't need any gradient, right? And then we've got like, let's say num uh, sequence length equal let's say two, and we're going to do for t in range set clan. Um, we're going to say, all right, so state equals, so let's say the state initially equals the uh, input. Mm. State initially equals input or all ones. Yeah, let's say state equal input. And then we've got this W. So we're going to say, okay, autograd.variable, and it's a torch.rand, and it requires gradient. Okay, and then, so in theory, each time step for an RNM, we're going to let introduce extra inputs, but as you say, kind of the math is a bit complicated. So uh, we're just going to multiply by W each time. So I'm going to do W times state. Uh, okay. So we can print the state at the end and print the W and print the input. And let's just run that. So if we do Python test grad 2, uh, okay, so we've got here's our input. Here, oh, let's give it a. Um, Let's set the seeds so that it's reproducible. Torch dot manual seed. One, two, three. Okay, so each time we're going to get the same numbers called the manual seed, right? So we've got the input. Here's a W, and here's our state. Uh, and then we're going to do the back prop. So the back prop, we're simply going to do. Uh, so the state is the output, right? We can do that, we can do out equal state. Uh, we're going to do out dot backward, and then we're just going to do like all uh, ones, one row three, and then we're going to print out the w dot grad. Okay. Cool. All right, and then let's sim simplify, just make the set length one. All right, so this is the situation that we had initially, right? So the gradient simply matches the input. Uh, why does it match the input? Because we've got, uh, so set length one. We've got, well, let's do it like, uh, uh, how do we do? I can't remember. Uh, so set length one. Um, we've got out equal W times input. So the gradient of the out with respect to W is simply input, right? And then um, set length two, we calculated just now. So set length two, we've got out equal W times W times input. And so the gradient should be like two times input times W, uh, which we checked before, but let's just um, recheck that. Uh, okay, so two, um, two times uh, input times W 
and that matches the gradient so good all right and then we can keep going right so let's say we have a set length of 50 so then we've got our equal uh, w to the power of 50 so we've got input times w to the 50 and then d out by dw is going to be then 50 times input times w to the power of 49 all right so let's try that so we've got 50 All right, so obviously this is kind of like vanishing gradients and stuff, right? Uh, but anyway, do these numbers match up? So we've got 50 times the input times, and then I don't remember how to do power in uh, W help, but anyway. Uh, so let's say 4, 2, 8, 5, and then maybe it's like this, uh, 49. Uh, about zero, that's not useful. Uh, let's, let's do it here, right? So let's do print, and then we're going to do 50 times input zero times uh, w zero, and that's going to be something like um, um, power. Can we do this? 49 input zero times w zero. This is probably not going to work. Anyway, let's try it. Uh, inconsistent tensor size. Uh, okay, so I may have uh, slightly uh, cheated here and jumped out uh, through time. Uh, so uh, basically, this should be one uh, row of three. Uh, and then I haven't actually checked any further than that. Uh, all right, so... Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, here's our gradient here, the one that we got from uh, Torchwood's grid. And here's our gradient by simply differentiating uh, by hand. All right, so the match, so that's good. Uh, all right, so what this shows is we can reuse this weight uh, as many times as we want, like 50 times or whatever, and it's going to calculate the gradient correctly for that. Uh, now, this is a very uh, simplified like RNN because uh, we're not adding in an additional input at each t time step. We're simply like doing some sort of, we're not even doing a metric multiplication, we're just doing a per element, but yeah, whatever. Uh, but we should actually be adding some sort of input here. Uh, that's going to complicate the maths if we try to um, check that manually. Uh, which we will do, but in the next session. So in this session, we basically saw, uh, okay, so you can create a, a W uh, as an autograd variable. You're going to set the required square to true. Uh, you can use that in as, as many times as you like. Uh, and then when you back propagate it um, in this simplified example, uh, we could check the gradient manually and it matched what autograd gives us. So we can simply reuse this wave, so that's cool. Uh, all right. Thank you very much for listening.